Change comes by creating a better alternative. We can't just keep on adding on to what we have if we're really committed to creating something that changes. It is 2018 and the earth is submitting her invoices for the streets we have paved with gold. And payment needs to be underwritten by a monumental mind shift. New Zealand has the opportunity to be the most diverse and inclusive country in the world. We can lead by example, but we need to do it together. You can have all the amazing ideas, but if you can't take those to scale for the world, the ideas just sit there doing nothing. New Frontiers is about strengthening our collective vision for a more beautiful future. Good on you for wanting to be here to try and change the course of humanity from New Zealand. People who are making real change, who are in fact working at a systemic and fundamental level to change the entire paradigm in regenerative language of how we kaitiaki our planet. What we really want to be in the business of is healing the soil, healing the land, and healing the human beings who are on that land. I've spent my entire life as a New Zealander surrounded by the sea. We have 15,000 kilometres of coast, the 11th longest coastline in the world. Our economy depends upon it, and we love it, but we need to protect it. There are more than a billion people in the world today who have no direct access to paved roads. Their lives are fundamentally different from our own. All the communities that we, we work with, what we do when we first hit the ground is that we go and give back to the community. My life's mission is to give every single person on the planet a free, practical education. I would have never thought that we could create a business of the scale that we did, but it started one step at a time. Small actions, learning, finding what works, and slowly scaling it up. Things we see in Silicon Valley and the way in which we see the technology transforming the world, we see this ability to rewrite some of the physics of the rules of the systems. Get people prepared for the massive amount of capital that is shifting towards dedication to do good in the world, but not many people are trained for this multi-dimensional kind of work with money, including the psychological, the emotional, and the spiritual. For all of Silicon Valley's obsession with data, there was no data at all on diversity. We need to set goals and measure ourselves against them to know if we are truly making progress. Everyone's heard about microenterprise and microfinance, and there's actually an unconscious bias today where people only give women small amounts of money. They're not given the money to scale and do great. We are often cutting our legs off before we even start. We've created a capital system where we're innovating against the labor market. Like, we're not innovating against good problems. The problem with Bitcoin was, though, that it never really actually fulfilled this sort of vision that it had. Instead, it kind of drifted into this direction of, of what we call digital gold. We're in a problem of walled gardens. Companies and corporations have walled in our information, and now we're at a state where that open protocol of the internet is being restricted, and that's restricting innovation. Help us take back control from some of these big companies who are doing things with our information, with our data, that we didn't expect or that we don't want. Our whole world is starting to get defined by different types of algorithms, and how do we develop ones that are safe and clinically effective? Having targets in legislation binds future governments, and that is massive. So I encourage you all to be involved, get engaged. We've started a movement, you know, what's good for Māori is good for Aotearoa New Zealand, and it's good for humanity. When was the last time that you thought about that teacher who had a huge influence on your life? Sometimes parents don't like us because when kids are coming back home, they start asking more and more and more questions. You were smiling and you were laughing and you were also connecting with each other. And that's just a taste of the power of games. If sort of the old world was this one that was really passive uh, for consumers, we really liked the idea of something that was much more active, much more creator. And, and even as has been talked about today, a co-creator. We can trust that as our informational horizons expand and as we listen, that our care will call us to the right action. I have to say the past few days has been one of the most profound weeks of my life. Thank you for being in service to the questions of the day at a global scale, at an Aotearoa New Zealand scale, at a human scale. To me, that is leadership. There's never been as much reason as today to be nervous, but there's never been so much reason to be hopeful. But I must actually say that that balance has changed over the last two days. Thanks to what has occurred here, the hope is dominating. 
I invite you, if you have a hidden story, to think about the power of it and to think about sharing it and giving others hope. In this very body, I hold one tiny contribution to the future of the human race. With every kick, a reminder of a global citizen in the making, already taking notes.